From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. Grab your Bibles, pens and notebooks and stand by for some more revelation knowledge as well as life-changing principles from the Word of God. Let's join Alan back as we discover wisdom for life. Good morning, dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg, and this week we're having a look at your authority as a believer. Praise God. If you're a believer in Christ, Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Get a hold of that. All the power of the enemy, no matter what Satan throws at you. You've been given authority over it, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Father, I thank you so much for this privilege of studying your word today. And speak to us, Lord. We receive all that you have for us. And let us catch revelation of our authority that you've given to us. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Listen to what he said. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. I don't care what the devil's trying to do in your life. It's time for you to stand up in the authority that Jesus gave you. Now, I know I have been battered myself. Satan has done his best in this year of the open door of his glory, seeing the double manifesting in your life. He's tried to steal it, try to take you out, try to hurt the family, try to hurt the business. That's all. That, that's what Satan does. He comes, according to Jesus in Mark chapter 4, that he came to steal the word that was sown. Every word that's been delivered, the devil's tried somehow to steal it. But that is over. What you're going to find out this week is that you have authority. That authority gives you power over the power of the enemy. No matter what power. Every time the devil somehow gets us to think, now he's really strong, now he's really powerful, Jesus said, I gave you authority over that. Hallelujah. Now we ended off yesterday. Come and have a look here again in Ephesians. Chapter 1, I'm going to read the scripture again so that we know that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16, Paul says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. There we see that wisdom and Revelation knowledge is by the Holy Spirit. It's a spirit and anointing that comes on us to be able to understand God's ways and know how they work. Verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. Now remember, hope is that earnest expectation, a knowledge of who you are in Christ and not accepting anything less. In other words, if God said that He heals you, 1 Peter 2.24, there's a hope there, an earnest expectation. Now we know that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We'll come back to that point, but let's just keep reading here for now. That we have the hope of His calling. What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? Now remember Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your need, all your need, all your need, supplied according to His riches in glory. So yea, he says that we may know what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance. And verse 19, what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe? Are you a believer? Yeah. So this power works towards you. Which power are we talking about? According to the working of His mighty power, which He worked in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His right hand in the heavenly places. Now, remember this. When Jesus died on that cross, He died and He said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was completely separated from the Father. He died and went to hell and paid the price that you and I should have paid. And that I mean, he was dead in sin. Now, he never sinned. He never committed any sin. 
The Bible says he was made to be sin. Wow. He became sin itself. He was made to be sin so that we might receive the righteousness of God. And in that place of being dead in that sin, God spoke life. In Hebrews chapter 1, he said, My, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. And he raised Jesus from the dead. The mighty power of God entered into Jesus, quickened his spirit, man. He's born back into life. The Bible called him the firstborn amongst many generations. Firstborn means there's a second and a third and a fourth. And then there's you and me. Hallelujah. Born back into life and raised him from the dead. That power that entered in, his spirit went back into his body quickening of the Holy Spirit. There wasn't even blood in that vein. He didn't even have blood in his body, but that body came back to life. That power that conquered death itself. Three days, his body was dead in that grave. Blood, empty of blood. And then three days later, the power of God raised Jesus from the dead. Now, how awesome was that power? That same power is what he worked into us. Look at that, verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the same mighty power which he released in Jesus? So, that power raised Jesus from the dead and did what? Seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, verse 20. Verse 21, far above all principality, far above all power, far above all might, far above all dominion, and far above every name that is named. Now listen, sickness is a name. Diseases have names. Poverty is a name. Lack is a name. Whatever depression, these mental diseases that doctors pronounce, they all have a name. Jesus is raised far above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all under his feet. Now, what do you think all means? Well, it still means all today because that's what all means. Amen. All is everything. He put it all under the feet of Jesus. And then he gave him, Jesus, to be head over all to the church. So it's a gift. He, putting Jesus as head over everything, he gave that as a gift to the church, which is his body. So we know that the church is the body of Christ. We see it in so many scriptures through the word of God. And being his body, the Bible says that body is the fullness of him who fills all in all. So praise God, you and I corporately all together are the fullness of Jesus Christ. Being the fullness of Jesus Christ, we are his body. Now, that's a point we need to know. Let's go to verse chapter 2, verse 1. And you, now that, as I said yesterday, that big number two there, that chapter two, just take a pencil and put your line through it. Uh, that's not part of the scriptures. That's it's simply an index system that we put in later after Paul wrote this. Paul didn't write the letter and go to and. No, he's busy writing this. The word and is a conjunction. It means that the previous thought, this, this thought follows a previous thought. And no one walks into a room and says and. Well, you know, it's a, it's a joining thought. So let's read it that way. So he fills us, who fills all in all, and you, he made alive. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which, which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Now all of us know, all of us were distracted, were misled by Satan, by the demons. And he says here that we walked according to the way the world operates. We didn't know any better. That's how the world does it. So we did it that way. This, our friends did it. So we did it. Our parents did it. So we did it. So, but it was being led by the prince of the power of the air, which is talking about the devil. Verse 3, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. So, Paul's saying yeah, there's no distinction. We all began the same way. Verse 4, but, <laughs> hallelujah. I love it when God brings up a but. 
See, but completely puts that. The previous thought is just a race. You know what it's like. Someone says, you know, um, you're a nice guy and, and you know, uh, you, you're not, you know, you're pretty good at what you do, but and you just know, well, that just erased all of that. That's all gone now because here comes the truth. Well, that but just eliminated the past thought. What was the past thought? We were all part of the world. We all sinned. We all were misled. But, well, that just got that thought eliminated. God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, He made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And He raised us up together. Together with who? Jesus, chapter 1. And he made us sit together, together with who? Jesus, as in chapter 1. Where? In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if we are in Christ, and Christ is far above all principality, verse 21 of chapter 1, all power, might, and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this, but also in which is to come, and all things are under his feet, if I'm in Christ, and I'm his body, even if I'm the little toe on the body, that little toe, that little last piece, the one right at the bottom, still the body, and all things are under his feet. It's under me, and it's under you. Hallelujah. Did you get that? The word of God has said that when God raised Jesus from the dead, he seated him at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. You cannot get any higher than that unless you were the Father Himself, and we're not. He is Father. He is God. He is the one seated in the supreme place of authority. No one will ever take that. So outside of that, you cannot get any higher than the right hand of the Father. And Jesus is sitting there, and so are you. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I know... I know the first time we hear something like this, the mind tilts. That's what renewing the mind is about. See, we've got to hear these things and allow it to renew our minds. And he says here, verse 6, He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places. Where? In Christ Jesus. Where is He? At the right hand of the Father. You can see that in chapter 1. Amen. So, here we are. Seated in, Father, uh, seated in Christ at the right hand of the Father. We've been given all that authority. Now, this is nothing new. This is how God intended it right from the beginning. Come with me to Genesis chapter 1. Now, we've been having a look at this all year long. Genesis chapter 1. And have a look at verse 26. Then God said. Now, that God said is so important to understand. That's exactly how God created. You look at chapter 1. Verse 1, it says here, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Huh. Now, if you read that in the original Hebrew, it literally reads this way. God said, Light be, light was. Oh, hallelujah. Light be, Light was. Why? God spoke. And what God said happens. You can see that all the way down. That's exactly how God created. Uh, God saw the light was good. Verse 6, God said. Verse 7, thus God made. Verse 9, God said. The end of the verse, and it was so. Verse 11, God said. End of the verse, and it was so. You come all the way down. Verse 14, God said, and then verse 18, and God saw. Verse 20, God said, end of the verse 21, and God saw. And you see, there's, a, there's definitely a, a pattern here. Verse 24, God said, end of the verse, and it was so. And then verse 25, and God saw it. So we see that God created everything with His Word. You can see that in Hebrews. Come and have a look here. Hebrews chapter 11 now. I want you to just put a marker there because we're going to come right back out at this chapter again. Hebrews chapter 11, look at verse 
One, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. So, first of all, God, um, he obviously saw it in his own mind, but in the natural it wasn't seen yet, and yet God called it. And so that was faith being released. God spoke, and the spirit of faith is having believed I speak. That's what John, uh, Paul said in Corinthians. Having believed I speak is the spirit of faith. God releases that, and he says that faith is the evidence of things not seen. So if something is brought into existence, that proves there was faith in action. Verse 2, for by it the elves are taking God, good testimony. Now look at verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So here we see the word of God is what created the worlds. That frame talks about bringing into existence, creating. That bringing into existence and creating so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now, it doesn't say from things that, are, that didn't exist. They just simply were not visible, but God brought them into the seen realm by faith. The Bible says there, through His spoken word. Now, with that in mind, remember, keep your mark here. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said. So what He's about to say here is going to become a reality. Yeah? Because we saw God said, and it was. God said, and we saw. So God said, let us make man in our own image. Now, he wasn't saying, uh, you know, should we make man? No, he's already decided ahead of time. This is not, hey, guys, let's do something. Let's make man. That's not what he's saying yet. He is saying, man, be, literally, like, like, be. So he's saying, let man be in our image According to our likeness, let them have dominion. According to our likeness, let them have dominion. According to our likeness, let them have dominion. Get that? And you realize God has complete dominion. He says the same way we're going to create this man. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So you put those two verses together. Now, it's not written like this in the Hebrew, as God said, light be, light was. But the implication is there. Man be, man was. Verse 26, man be in our image. Verse 27, man was in the image of God. He created man in his own image. In the image of God, He created them. Then verse 28, listen to this now. Then God blessed them. He released into them a word that empowered them to prosper. What was that word? He said, fruitful be. Oh, hallelujah. Multiply. Right there, that man was created with the ability to be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Now listen. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I've given you every herb that yields seed. So get that. The first thing God gives man is dominion, authority. And the second thing he gives him is seed in order to expand that authority. And he gives him seed which is on the face of the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed so it shall be to you for food or provision. See, the seed is what produces the provision. He didn't give him food for food. He gave him seed for food. The seed would continue to produce food for him. Verse 30, Also to every beast of the field, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Now listen to verse 31. Then God saw everything that He had made, and indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, if everything God made was good, included in that was the man He just created. And so God was pleased with Adam. Well, that tells me Adam operated in faith. Now, how do I know that? Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Remember we read in verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Look at verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. It doesn't just say it's difficult or it's really hard to do it. 
Now it says, it's impossible to please God without faith. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, get a hold of what's happened here. He's created man in his image. And then he said to man, now you operate on this earth, and you be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. And it pleased God. God was pleased with the result. That tells me that Adam was, ex was exercising that dominion by faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. In other words, he was exercising faith. And if he was exercising faith, then he was being just like his father. God created him in his image. And so he was operating that earth the same way God did, having dominion over it. Now, I said all of that to get this point across. Man originally in the garden was created to have authority over every living creature and over every creation of God. Every creation. Now, he was not given authority over man. That, that we need to understand. There was no other people there. And so man does not, he's not given dominion authority. We know that there is authority structure that God puts in place. But he, he was not told to dominate man. So that heavy oppressive domination, that's evil. That's not of God. There is leading and there's guidance and there's submission one to another, all that kind of thing. God has given authority over all creatures, over all the earth. That authority dominion is how originally he was created. Now tomorrow I'm going to show you how Satan took that. He tried to steal it, but Jesus got it back. It's that authority when he said, I give you authority over all scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. That authority is simply the original authority that God had given Adam that the devil tried to steal. And so no matter what has happened in your life, the devil tried to take it away from you. He tried to take that authority. He tried to tell you you've lost it all. You're no good. No, 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 no. You've been created in the image of God. And God fully intended for you to live the same way Adam did. And so no matter what problems have come against you in your life, God saved you from it. You may be going through some things, but I want to pray for you. And so I'm going to pray for you right on the back end of this. I'll see you all. Sometimes we find ourselves lacking. We need God, and we really need true men of God, men who can teach us how to live the Word. Those who receive the abundance of grace, grace is available, but it has to be tapped into. The glory, the power, the fire, the faith, the grace. God has done something great, something awesome. I've received my breakthrough in the spirit. I feel so renewed in my spirit. I've learned so much. My faith is more stronger now. <laughs> Family, we are now in a place where we've developed our faith. I'm looking forward to attend all the services. The Holy Spirit wants to release in you a greater gift. I'm expecting, just like a pregnant woman, keep the word of faith alive. Register today and position yourself to receive your faith encounter. If you have authority, things happen. God created you to reign in life. The moment you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you are restored as a son of God. Once you know it, you cannot imagine how you could have actually lived before without it. If you're tired of always getting the same results, or if you're unhappy about the way life is treating you, then this series of teaching will definitely change your life. Packed with revelation and practical teaching, the series will transform the way you think, shedding light on who you are in Christ, what you are capable of, as well as practical ways to help you have God's power working through you. To have this key to walking in the dominion you were called to, your authority as a believer is a powerful series. Accept and receive the authority that you already have as a believer. Get this series today and see your faith rise to new levels. Your life will never be the same when you understand your authority as a believer. This message is so vitally important for you as a Christian. 
It is probably the one area that the enemy has managed to steal so much from the lives of Christians. You know, it's all very well learning that I can hear God's voice and it's all very well learning that I can pray and it's all very well learning that I can tithe and sow my seed. But even in doing all of that, if the devil can come along and tell me you don't deserve it, you really shouldn't be pushing this thing so hard. I mean, you know, you just uh, remember, just remember you're an old sinner saved by grace. Well, praise God, I was an old sinner, but hallelujah, I have been saved. I now know what my authority is as a believer. And you're able to resist that enemy on the basis of that authority. You will see victory in your life every single time. So make sure you get a hold of your set today. Don't delay it. Get it. Get this in your heart. Understand who you are as a believer. And I'm telling you, you will see so much that you've been waiting on suddenly start to come to pass. It's your time for victory in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you for my dear friend, and I thank you, Lord, that even as you've begun the good work in their lives, you'll complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. No matter what the enemies try to bring against that household, against that family, I bind in the name of Jesus. Satan, you get out of that house. In Jesus' name, I resist you. You flee. Father, I thank you as I release your blessing into that home. In the name of Jesus, I speak peace. I speak life, and I thank you for the victory. And we praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I believe it's done. Just stand in agreement with me. The Bible says if two of us agree touching anything, it will be done. I love you dearly, and I want to thank you for the letters you've been writing. I really do appreciate it. So many testimonies have been coming in of how good God is, how these with this word that people are learning is working in their lives and I appreciate it I read those testimonies and celebrate with you and thank God for what he's doing in your life so please keep writing thank you for that well tomorrow we're going to carry on once again and just dig deeper and praise God see the victory of our authority as a believer and this is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord and remember life is a choice choose life God bless you Alan Bagg Ministries has made this week's Wisdom for Life programs available on CD and DVD. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can.